Evening everyone, can you hear me okay? Let's just do a quick sound check. Can you hear me okay? Sound check, sound check. Good, okay, uh, let's just click through this and uh, I'm going to start with the Aussie because we've got a lot of data, we've got Aussie rates this week. But before I do anything, let me just re check what we've got. Quite a lot of data today, uh, nice little push up in the UK services. So we've got Canada and US coming back after a long weekend and two and a half hours before Europe opens we've got this uh, Aussie rates and not much else otherwise that morning splattering the European data then manufacturing and then into Wednesday we're expecting a drop in uh, GDP for Aussie, so that's priced in really, that's uh, looking for a drop and Aussie has been falling of late, so manufacturing on Wednesday for the UK uh, and then we've got, this is one of the key things for me, this is the UK uh, inflation report here, so I'm going to get my alarm clock out in a minute and <clears throat> set an alarm for that because that is going to be quite crucial. And then um, Canadian rates. Uh, beige book as well on Thursday as well. And ECB on Thursday, of course. The key thing is going to be the press conference. Nobody's really expecting any changes. Um, but we have an ECB conference, press conference at 1.30, so that's something else for my alarm clock as well. And then Friday, just a splashing throughout the whole day of various data, nothing really significant. So, well, let's just relay that onto the charts. What I'm seeing on this Aussie is this funnel pattern. Let me get a decent colour. Yep, seeing this funnel pattern. So here, so we dropped out of here, and then started winding up. Dropped again. So we've been in this, created this funnel. And here we are on the underside of the funnel now. So if we break. I think if we break Friday's low, I think this is this is potentially going to come come down. We might work, 75 is a big number, and uh, some key pivots in 75. Otherwise, we could over a period of time <clears throat> throughout September, October, I would have thought come down to 70 <clears throat> and pick up the low here. But this funnel pattern, let me just clear this away because this funnel pattern is really important. Um, yeah, we have seen many, many examples over time of this funnel pattern and the potential for it to work. So it's a potentially a repeat of this one here. <clears throat> we dropped out of here in January, not for a lot of pips, 7165, two or three hundred pips once we came out of that. But the pattern's the same. Can't get through the highs. In this case, we've come off the 2 EMA as well. So we've dropped out back down support. Um, but you can see the 2 EMA here on the daily. So I will just be looking for... Um, I did short some of this today, actually, but not, didn't get a few pips out of it. Left some on the table. And then we'll see how that one works. Um, let's look at the Euro. I mean, we're, we are in... I keep talking about this box, but... Um, we're coming to the low of the channel here. The channel's 
started from March 2015. Obviously, you've got ECB this week. I guess the one thing that the ECB could do is introduce, um, go deeper into negative rates and extend the program. But no, I have to be honest, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think the market's pricing that in. Um, I think ECB and Bank of Japan are expected to be relatively mild at this stage. Basically, because I, I think the, they need to keep their powder dry. You know, the equity markets are strong. And the dollar is relatively weak overall, not in the case of this one after this drop. So I think we we'll, could end up staying neutral. It's not a great chart. There's no setup there as such. Um, apart from the fact that we have a 20 and 200 EMA cross, we, we crashed into the 15 EMA on Friday. So we could see 110 sometime soon. Well, the risk reward ratio on that is weak. No other real chart patterns on that. And so let's go to the pound US. <clears throat> um, so we're hitting this trend line from the low of February 16 to the highs of July 14. <clears throat> we're up against this. So if we come back into, we had good data today, but it, it's you know, good services data. UK is a service economy, so you would have thought that would have uh, push that higher, but it's a very, very slow day and it's priced in. Not a lot of data for the UK this week. So I think and I would look, I think tomorrow is going to be key. If we come into 134 and sell, if you're a swing trader, you might want to put a, an order in there to sell at, one, at 380, 370 with a stop just narrowly above 480 because if we come out of this and roll over what I'm looking for is another push into that resistance line because we only had we had one two this is the third test of this line um, MACD is pretty much straight up we're not across the central line in MACD for this one. So we are still very much in the sell zone. So another test of this could see us come down to 130. And I would reckon on staying on the right side of the trend for that one until we close above that. Uh, if you look at that on the four hour chart now, uh, that will take us down into 132 is this uh, 200 EMA. And so far you can see every time we've come up to this area, we sold here, breached it and then sold, came up here and sold, came up here and sold, came up here having a hard time. So you can see how important this is yeah this is a key at, at level if we can hold 133 start closing above 133 then 135 and so on is possible so that's the scenario just look to see how we handle that on the pound yen us pound yen it's had a huge push up three decent weeks to the upside <clears throat> And I think that we've got uh, a cup. Now we can come down here to form the low of the handle and potentially come up and really do a serious test of this trend line. So this is going to be my chart of the week. I would like to see 136. I'd like to see a full test of 136. And the reason why I want to see that test is because, several reasons, Um, it will be a retest of this 
mid trend line. Uh, we've had quite a few up days and we are due a pullback. So we had a decent wave one, now it's a question of wave two and then wave three could be the propulsion into this level. So this is my chart of the week. This is the one I'm going to really focus on, but I'm going to be patient for pullback. Now, seeing as the US were away yesterday, I'm just expecting tomorrow to be a little choppy as the markets settle down, and then we get into Wednesday when we've got um, all that data coming through, particularly Red Book. Okay, so there's no other... Let's look at US dollar yen. On the weekly, we crashed into the 20 MA. That's a, that's, a, that's a simple moving average. Let me just double check that. I can't for now. And I'm 99% certain that's a simple moving average, 20. So, so we pushed into that, and so far, yeah, this 20 MA has been dictating the trend. Since we broke down here, got close to it there, touched it here. And this is the first test again for a while. So I think if this is going to survive, um, we'd need to hold 102.50 or 102 at the lowest and then push higher again. So one, you can see I've got an alarm set on the daily chart. This little line here is is alarmed, just under the 102 level. <clears throat> um, indices. Let's look at the Dow. If you're seeing anything different, then just shout. Um, yeah, let me know what you you are seeing. Strong trend. Uh, we're even holding up the 20 MA. They're only pushed down into 18.4, and a hold. Could potentially see us get another push higher if it holds. Four hour, you can see the 200 MAs down there at 18.4. No sell signal in that daily. Friday's push was higher. We're holding up the weekend levels, holding up flat on Monday, of course, and a higher close for the weekly. But a close under 18.4 would be a sell signal. Gold. Um, let's look at the weekly on this one. There's the channel. So we had a fantastic push up here into late 2011. Pulled back, pushed higher, way to the downside. And then we just, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Just waving around, then we get the a nice sort of bottoming pattern here and then we just push right back into the channel high and now we're struggling uh, two, got potential crossover of the 50 and 200 here, potential golden cross on the weekly um, tested the 20 MA 20 moving average and held I would be interested, if, if that comes down to 13.10, I still think we'll test 13.10 on this one. If we test 13.10 on gold, or, or 1300 of course. So we're holding that level of support. Just want to see a full test of, you know, 12.75 would be better to come down and test this major support area here. And that's sort of borne out by the daily as well. The fact we can't close above, I don't trust charts that can't close above the 20 EMA. And we haven't closed above that since uh, middle of August. So looking for strength in the dollar, showing through in the gold, as well as 
the Aussie US. Okay. Anything else you want to look at? Let's look at the DAX. I know you, some of you guys like to trade the DAX. Um, so here's the funnel to working on the bull side, not not the uh, bear side like the Aussie US. So this is divergent with the euro. So uh, one, two, three. This is wave four. So in the process, potentially wave five. So if we can hold above these highs, we should be able to go and retest this high up here as well. So let me just scrap the, the drawing and let's just clarify what we're seeing. So big bull bar on Friday. So if we come down and test 10, 6 and hold, then we've got the potential for higher levels. could potentially come and test 11,000 if we can hold that. We'll come out of start closing on the 10.6 and this could be getting into trouble. It is high and we've got some high readings here. If we fit the whole of the last move going right back to April 15. Yeah, 11,000 would see us hit the top of the zone, at which point we might run out of steam. This is going to, I think, because I'm, the relationship is so strong with the euro, I think the impact, the, the decision for the next potential move on this one is going to occur around the Thursday ECB press conference. So... I would watch these lower levels, 10 and a half, see if the press conference drags it down there and holds for a potential 500 pip move into 11,000. FTSE. Um, Big move on Friday again. We've come down to test and we've held the 20 MA. I want to see a little dip into a 6.8 if this is going to hold. And again, close under 67.50 and that's potentially toast. Stocks. Um, the one that is very interesting and has been, I've been talking about this off and on for quite a while, is Facebook. Uh, I don't think Facebook is finished yet by a long shot. I think Facebook uh, is at the very least going to come and test the top of that channel. Because that, that's how the funnel can work to the upside. If we start closing above uh, 13, 130, and that could run to 150, uh, 150. let's see, uh, this is the last big move, yeah, 150, 57, so we've got the potential, if we can push up and cl close above 130, 30, then I think we could see 150 plus. There are some fundamentals driving this. Um, there, are, I think it's a Chinese investor now has a bigger holding than its founder. So if you are interested in stocks, okay, so the question is, where do you buy it? Uh, ideally, down there at 12020. Um, will we see that? I don't know. We may just close above this area here on uh, this part, first half of the week and then just push higher. Uh, if you are clever and hold out for a good price, then 12020 is the way to go. Goldman's, a little bit, Friday's close was good. 
while the 6-6 six, six is a pullback for a long. So look at Bank of America. Um, coming into a trend line support. It's struggling. It's really struggling. Um, once the sector that has been suffering has been retail. And I would look, as we get into autumn, I would look to short a gap fill on this. So I'm setting an alarm for a gap fill on Costco. Got a bit of a, an island set up here. So we gapped up here in July. So we gap down here 31st of August. I, I want to see that at least ideally close the gap at 161. But I would look to see um, if it pushes higher into 165, all the better. But I'm looking to get short this one. I hope it doesn't just break 155 and drop. I hope it, gets, I hope it has a breather um, and lets me get short higher up on that one. Okay, so that's a couple. Let me see what else I've got. NVIDIA, that's had a great run. Looking a bit hesitant up there. It's a strong stock. Let's look at the miners. Um, let's look at Gold Corp. Uh, I would like to see 1720 on Gold Thorpe, Gold Corp, sorry, gapped up on Friday, so i um, be interested in a gap, it, sorry, in a push higher to 1720 on that one, look at some British ones. Had a good run. I mean, that was a tough area for it to get through. And it, so any retest of 1780 is a potential short for it, for a gap fill back down there at 1278. And given that we look as if we are getting a stronger dollar, I think the miners will suffer under a stronger dollar as the gold pushes higher. Redenta, similar sort of story, only pushing to 530. You could see that one come down. Oil. Um, I think the oil stocks, this is like a rig. The oil services are struggling. The oil's come off quite significantly over the last week. I'd be interested in buying that if we come and test 885. I think that's got, I think that will drop. Um, Valero had a good year last year, pulling right back, not trapped in a range there, Apache, okay I'll leave it there for now, um, 
Yeah, I'll be in the trading room tomorrow. And let's see what, uh, hang on a second, we've got not that much data at all, have we? Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll be in the room sometime after 8 o'clock. Yeah, eight, um, 8 o'clock as usual. And then we'll see where that can take us. All right, thanks very much. Any questions? Okay, uh, see you tomorrow. Thanks.